Hello again and welcome, and thank you for listening to my series on Python for the Digital Humanities. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe down in the bottom, and if you want to start from the very beginning in the series, uh, I'm going to be speaking about uh, what I've been speaking about for the past few videos, and that is how to handle data outside of Python, and use Python to kind of process it and analyze it. Now in this video, I'm going to be speaking about XML files. As I said in a previous lecture on text files, uh, text files are very good for storing certain kinds of data, namely text. Uh, they are not, however, good for uh, information that needs to be stored in more nuanced ways. And in the previous video, we looked at Excel files and how Excel files were pretty good at creating a structural uh, hierarchy with data that is consistent in that same structure. Meaning, if you have data that is always going to have the same information, like name, date, uh, death year, etc., Excel files are really good. However, Excel files are very limiting in that they can't account for variance in quantity of a specific category of data. And that's where XML files come in, and also JSON files. Now, in this series, I'm not going to be dealing with JSON files that much. Actually, not at all. I'm going to be dealing with that in the next series, which is going to be more advanced stuff that you can do with Python for digital humanities. And that should be coming out uh, within a couple months. In this video, I want to strictly speak about XML files. Now, I am not going to go through and talk about how to analyze them. If we look over here, that's going to be in lecture number 28. In this lecture, however, I want to focus on the benefits of considering XML files for storing data and some of the ways you should consider kind of... Um, using it in your own projects. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump right in. Uh, in order to work with XML and Python, you're going to need uh, this module here, XML tree. Uh, you download it the same way you download everything else. Uh, and in Python, you're going to be uh, installing specifically using pip, and pip is going to install uh, element path. Uh, I'll type it out here so you can kind of see that. So just simply pip install element path, and that'll give you the modules that you need to handle and process XML files. The other thing I recommend doing if you're working in Atom like I am is downloading and installing this uh, package called XML tools. And if you don't remember from my first video, the way in which you do that is you go over here to install under settings and you just type in XML tools and it'll pull it up. Why am I encouraging you to do that? I'm encouraging you to do that because uh, once you have XML tools installed, you can use this very handle th handy thing called uh, format, which is going to, let me just show you this so you can kind of see it. Uh, if we unformat it, it's going to look like that. What format's going to do is it's going to take our XML data and it's going to format it with where every single tag is delineated by a line and where uh, each tag is indented uh, the way it should be. And what this does, in case you can't tell from what happened when I took it away, it makes your XML data much more easier to read, much uh, much easier to read for a human eye. It doesn't matter for the computer. The computer is going to read it the exact same way. I just find it much easier to work with XML if I have it properly indented. So this is what an XML file is going to look like. It's going to start off with a series of tags, these open and close um, uh, carrots. And what that's going to do is it's going to delineate a, a certain um, a structure within the file. And every structure, if you notice, every tag has an open, as we see here, and a close, as we see here. Uh, the close tag tells the computer that that is the end of that grouping of data. Now, why are XML files particularly useful? They're very useful for DH projects, uh, especially uh, when you have data that is inconsistent. In other words, data that is going to have variation that it doesn't lend itself well to, um, to Excel. So if you're dealing with, let's just say, a series of places in a description, uh, in a text file, uh, each text file might have multiple places, but not consistently the same amount. And so if you're working in Excel, you might want to just do a bunch of columns to kind of account for all of these different places, but it'll look sloppy. It'll be expensive to analyze, and it's not going to be very conducive to working with that data. 
This is one of the reasons why uh, scholars typically will use some kind of data structure that it can account for that nuance. And in Python, there's really two major ways in which you should consider doing this. And the first is XML files, and the other is JSON files, which is going to be for job, um, job, <clears throat> excuse me, JavaScript uh, standard ob object orientation. Or I can't remember what it stands, no, object notation. That's it. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to be talking about Excel. So what do we notice here? If we were to put this in a Excel file, this is a piece of scripture in the Latin Vulgate up here. Uh, so this is Genesis 1.1. If we were to put this data into Excel, we might be able to do this very simply. We can have uh, the, gen uh, the book, the chapter, the verse, and the line all be different Excel columns. However, if you're a, a DH scholar and you're working with the Vulgate, one of the biggest problems that you have is that the Vulgate Latin uh, changes depending on place and time. And so certain words will be different, certain uh, phrases will be different, uh, and different manuscripts from different periods. If we were working in Excel, we really wouldn't have a good way to handle these variations. And that's where XML files come in. Now, if you notice, I have structured this XML file uh, in a very specific way. I start off by delineating my data. I then start off by creating a scripture tag. And this is something that I find to be very useful for working with XML files in Python. I like to mark up my XML files in two chief ways. I do it by providing individual uh, tags for each piece of data, as we see down here. But I also do this. I set up a series of attributes for the key chunk of data. So for the scripture tag, I have a, a few different attributes. I have an attribute book, chapter, verse, and line. And if you notice, it's kind of all repeated down here. Why do I do that? I do that because I want to handle the data differently in different circumstances. Sometimes I want to grab all of this data here simply as a dictionary in Python. Other times I want to grab an individual piece of, of data, in which case it's more uh, conducive for speed purposes to simply grab an individual tag. I do this because it allows for me to use XMLs uh, in very nuanced and more uh, versatile ways. It's not necessary. You can just do one or the other. This is just my personal preference. That's just to kind of clarify what's happening up here. So what's another reason why, uh, what's another thing that we actually see going on here? Well, one of the things that we see going on here is the Vetus Latina, the old Latin uh, parts uh, of the of the chap of the verse being laid out as well. And if you notice here, I have a um, a value or uh, a text in between each of these variant tags. The first one is primordio, and it's corresponding. C O R is just the way I, the attribute I created. You could use anything you want, so long as you're consistent. And I'm telling the XML file that it corresponds to Principio up here, so that I know where Primordio is going to replace uh, a certain word in this text. And then the next word I have here is Initio. It's another variation that, again, replaces Principio. And then Deus Fecit replaces Deus, uh, or Creavit Deus. Oops, there we go. Um, so what are some of the benefits for uh, doing that? It allows for me in Python to process that data and analyze it differently. So I've got a little script here just to kind of demonstrate what this can do. Uh, normally, when you're, if you were working in a text file, you would have to write out all of these variations and re repeat that line multiple times. If you're working across an, a large text file, like 35,811 lines of scripture, and you're working with individual lines, that can get very expensive very quickly. By setting up tags to correspond specifically to individual words or uh, short phrases like Deus Fecit, I'm able to allow for Python to handle the data much more quickly. So what happens when I run this script? Well, when I run this script, it allows me for it to print out all of the variations in, uh, in that single line of scripture perfectly. So if you notice here, uh, one variation is in Primordio Creavu Deus Caelum et Terram. The next one goes on with Initio, and the next one goes on with uh, Deus Fecit instead of Creavit Deus. And the final one is this Ach and Et. Very quickly, I am able to print out all the possible variations of, uh, of scripture. And I can also work with this and uh, allow it for, to loop through all these differently to account for uh, any possible uh, 
uh, arrangement of these. So some texts, some manuscripts might have primordio uh, deus fecit. I can account for that in the Python script. I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'm not going to explain what's happening here in this video. I'm simply trying to demonstrate to you the utility of working with XML files. Uh, so what I want you to come away with right now, at the very least, is just that XML files allow for you to structure data in much more nuanced and much more powerful ways. This is a very, very simple XML file. Uh, people will oftentimes have XML files for an entire text. So let's say you're working with a letter. You can mark up and delineate a specific person's name that appears in that letter. And you can delineate a specific place that appears in that letter. And you can go through and kind of make these very nuanced uh, files that you can work with. So when you need to perform searches across a wide variety of texts, you can do it much more quickly because your program's going to go through and it's going to find specific tags and not search an entire text. Again, hopefully you've understood kind of the power and versatility of XML files. And if you're interested in them, I highly encourage you to listen to lecture number 28 because I'm going to speak in a lot of detail about how we take these files, read them into Python, and how we can really do some cool stuff by analyzing those files. That's all for now, though. Thank you for listening.